I'm Stephanie Rideout, Leadership Fellow at Women Who Code for the Python track. Today, I'm very excited to welcome Sabrina Vega. Sabrina is a software engineer too at Microsoft on the Word Online team, where she focuses on boot experience and performance. Her family is originally from Colombia, but she was born and raised in Florida. Outside of her engineering role, Sabrina is passionate about diversity, inclusion, and belonging work, especially when it comes to the Hispanic Latinx community. She serves as the co-lead for SOMOS, which is the early and career community for Hispanic Latinx talent and allies at Microsoft that she co-founded two years ago. It has grown to over 500 members, impacting both full-time employees and interns. Thank you for joining me today, Sabrina. Would you like to introduce yourself and share a little bit about your career journey? Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so my name is Sabrina Vega. Like Stephanie mentioned, my parents are originally from Bogota, Colombia. Um, moved here and I was born and raised in Florida. Went to University of Florida and then around, I think, almost three years now, moved to Seattle to work full time for Microsoft. I have always been interested in computer science. Growing up, I was super into like spy gear, spy stuff and what, thought I wanted to work for the CIA. And so when I got put into my first kind of I did like an AP comp side class in high school, I was like, oh, OK, no, I want to do this. This is like fun. This is the kind of stuff that I wanted to do. And yeah, I was really interested in just finding different opportunities and how to get into tech. And I got really lucky that I was involved in NCWIT, which is the National Center for Women in Information Technology in high school. And they were a really great community and kind of helped guide me. I had some great kind of female mentors that guided me into saying, hey, you should do computer science. And so I found a couple of internships with Microsoft and then decided to do full time. And now here we are today. Yeah, that is so wonderful. I'm so happy you had such a great foundation in your youth and um, that could inspire you. So fantastic. Please tell us about working at Microsoft and the work you do there as a software engineer. Yeah. So as Stephanie mentioned, I am part of the Word Online team, which is part of the Word organization, pretty big team. Um, but I specifically work under performance. So a lot of with like how fast the application loads, how fast, you know, or how slow it takes to interact with stuff, how our features load up in the app when we boot and open up a document. And so I've been really lucky that with that team, I've been able to kind of have my hands in a bunch of different projects. So I work kind of in server side stuff as well as client side because kind of the boot experience covers all of it. I've also been able to kind of work with a lot of data and experimentation at Microsoft. We do, especially with Word, we do a lot of experiments. Everything is, has to make sure that it passes before we actually ship it out to customers. And so that kind of like customer first perspective was super new to me coming from university. And has been a fun skill that I've been able to learn. And so a lot of like SQL server side stuff, looking at how users experiences actually go and knowing what that means in numbers. And I've also been able to do some fun uh, UX work, which I didn't think that I would be able to do kind of being on the more servery website of stuff. But my team has really given me a lot of opportunities. So I've been able to do, we collaborate a lot with our design team and our PM team. And I have a great designer and PM on my crew. So uh, yeah, been able to kind of do a lot of different things all surrounding kind of the performance and boot space. That's phenomenal. It sounds like um, Microsoft is a really amazing company to work for, and you're working on so many really exciting projects, and that's amazing. So what can you tell us about the company and team culture at Microsoft? Yeah, so I, I guess to kind of backtrack, I started at Microsoft, like had my first internship with them after my freshman year of college kind of stumbled upon it super randomly. They had come to UF and were speaking, trying to get people interested in their internship. I went and talked to the recruiter and found out that they had a specific internship program for freshmen and sophomores. Um, Cause I'd kind of been warned in the past that, oh, like if you want an internship at a big tech company, you have to be a junior, like you have to have a bunch of things under your belt. And I was like, I have not even taken programming one. I don't know any of this. Um, so it was really cool to see that they had one 
made for folks that weren't there yet. And so I ended up doing the program and the basis of it is to explore the different disciplines. So you get to do both PM and software engineering, and then you get to later on decide if you get a return offer, which one would I actually want to pursue? And through that was kind of my intro into Microsoft culture. And I had a phenomenal summer. I met some of my best friends. I was able to come out to Seattle. I had never seen mountains or snow before. So living in Florida, I was super excited to be out here and they spoiled the interns. So we got gifts and concerts and it was really fun. There was like no doubt in my mind that I wanted to come back. And I ended up coming back for two other summers doing, I did my last one in California with the PowerPoint team, which was just equally as fun. And so when it came time to kind of deciding where I wanted to work full time, I knew that I would be able to still grow professionally at Microsoft. Like it's a huge company. So if I wanted to say, okay, I don't want to do, you know, office anymore. I want to jump over to gaming. I could go to Xbox. If I wanted to do something else, I could go over to like EDU side of stuff. I knew that I had a lot of opportunities, but then the plus for me was for sure the fact that I really loved going to work. Like I love my job. I love my coworkers. I had a lot of friends there. And so going to campus and like moving across the country, it kind of wasn't as daunting for me as one would expect going from Florida all the way to Seattle because it was like I already had a community there. Even though I was starting on a team that I did not even intern at all, I didn't know anyone. And once I joined, yeah, my team is amazing. And I've been really lucky that Word has a really rich history. It's a product that's been around for a really long time. So there are folks on the team that have been there since the beginning. They know everything. And then there's also a lot of folks that are brand new and they're bringing all these cool ideas Um And both are really welcome. And so it's fun to be part of a product that has so much history, but it's also inviting and like ready to grow. And so, yeah, it's, I can really feel like myself when I go to work and I've met really great friends. So it's yeah, great, great culture that I've been able to experience there. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really, that's phenomenal. So, um, What does diversity, inclusion, and belonging mean to you? And how did this inspire you to co-found Somos? Yeah, so I think I had always been interested in kind of diversity and inclusion work. I grew up in North Florida. There's not a lot of Hispanics in North Florida, but I went to the University of Florida and there are a lot of Hispanics that go to UF. So when I started university, I was able to kind of jump in to the Hispanic and Latinx community. And I got really, really involved in a lot of the DNI work. And that was kind of where my community and my like uh, support system was throughout college. So I loved the work that I did. I loved being able to help my own community. So when it came to Microsoft, I was without a doubt knowing that I wanted to continue that, but I wasn't sure really at what capacity. And when I joined the Word team, they have their own kind of DNI team, but they call it their div team. And so that's where the belonging piece comes in of diversity, inclusion, and belonging. And I'd never really heard that before. Like I'd heard of DNI, but I never heard of DIMB. And I really liked the concept because it just emphasized the fact that, hey, one thing is hiring diverse people and making them feel, you know, that they can be included at the company, but do they feel that they actually belong long-term on a team in a city as part of a company, as part of a group is like a whole different, but just as important endeavor. And so I think that belonging portion really stuck with me. And that was kind of the niche that Somos tries to fill. And so Somos is the early in career community um, for Hispanic and Latinx talent and allies at Microsoft. And we fall under a larger organization that is for all Hispanic and Latinx employees. But we felt, especially for those that are early in career, there was kind of a gap because a lot of us were, you know, coming from the university. We had just left four years of kind of having our best friends are creating these super bonds. Other people are coming from other countries. They're leaving their families. A lot of us weren't moving with families. Like we didn't have any established people. We were coming here by ourselves. So we didn't have that kind of belonging piece yet. And add on on top of that COVID and starting a new job, there was just like a whole plethora of people that felt that they didn't belong. And so we, I had kind of started at the company before COVID. And so I knew that there was room to grow in that area. And then when COVID started, my co-founder, Natalia Dunlap, she had kind of, I saw her posting and reaching out. And so we kind of teamed up and we were like, hey, I think this is a really big need that we could fill. Let's see kind of how we can work this out and actually make it a thing. Yeah, it's, ama- it's amazing um, all that Somos is doing to uh, foster that belonging in its members. That is really spectacular. 
What does community mean to you and how is SOMAS fostering the Hispanic Latinx community for those early in their careers? So community, I think specifically within the context of kind of Hispanic and Latinx culture is super important. I mean, the culture itself is a very one that is super communal. You know, you kind of hear a lot of the words of like familia and like the people that you grow up with. Um, and it's something that people really treasure. And so I thought has always been a part of my life, um, being Hispanic and being Colombian and especially moving to Seattle so far away from home. I knew that like if I wanted to live here full time, I needed to find a community. And that was a very shared sentiment with a lot of folks that, with anyone really, that moves to a new city. And so, yeah, SOMAS has been able, we've started around two years ago and we're now, yeah, 500 plus members, which is super exciting for us. There's so many people that are members of it. And so for us, we kind of, when we were planning it out, we broke it down into four different areas that we thought people would need kind of to be addressed in order to create that community. And so we have, and they're all different pillars that are run by SOMOS members, our leadership team. And so we have our uh, executive engagement pillar. That's kind of the career portion. So it's career panels, folks from higher up, like CVPs or whatever, coming in and talking to our group, having conversations about your 401k, about retirement. A lot of people are coming in and they're, they were first generation students. So now they're first time in the industry. So there are all these things that, you know, their parents didn't have to deal with, and now they can have peers to talk to about that. We also have our community service pillar. And so we've been able to partner with a lot of schools in the Seattle area that specifically serve the Hispanic and Latinx community. And so it's been cool to kind of, you know, Microsoft has a really big presence in Seattle. And so being able to use some of those resources to give back to the actual city and like the Hispanic and Latinx youth that could then come into Microsoft is really cool. We have our internship pillar that helps run the intern program with university recruiting for Hispanic and Latinx um, interns. And that is like my favorite part because I love interns and internships and I had such a great experience. And so I really want other interns to be able to have such a positive experience. Um, and then we have our social pillar, which is like the very fun one and the one that everyone likes because we have our white elephants and monthly lunches. We take trips to the wineries here in Seattle. We're trying to set up kind of meetups around the U.S. There's a big hub in Atlanta and a big hub in the Bay Area. So hopefully we'll be able to have some social events there also. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I agree that uh, community is everything. So <laughs> yeah. I love I love uh, everything that Somos is doing. Can you tell us about the impact Somos is having on the early in career Hispanic Latinx community at Microsoft? Yeah, so I think for me, the biggest way that I've seen impact was being able to talk with the interns. So we don't necessarily run the actual internship program, but we do one with OLA and with University Recruiting that is kind of a series of programming that are, re that are done for interns that self-identify as Hispanic and Latinx. And last year it was completely virtual, but we were able, you can do Airbnb experiences and we were able to do a virtual salsa dancing class. And we had a bunch of interns that were in Latin America. So like in Colombia, in Peru, um, in Mexico, others that were in the States. And we were all able to do it together, which was awesome. We did like a, a virtual magic show. We had, yeah, we do little cafecitos that are run by the interns themselves. And so it was awesome at the end of the summer to see the percentage of interns that gave us such good feedback and were able to say, hey, we really, really enjoyed our summer, even though it was all virtual, like we didn't actually get to go to campus or anything. And we want to come back next year as an intern, or we want to come back next year as a full-time employee. We've had a lot of folks now that, at least for Seattle, we're starting to open up again of the offices and people get to meet everyone for the first time. There are a lot of people that have come up to us and given us the feedback of, hey, when it was COVID for the last year and a half, like I moved here and I didn't know anyone. And the only reason I'm still in Seattle or I'm still at Microsoft is because I found a community and because I found people that were going through the same things with me and that could relate with me. And I was able to have friends, which is sometimes a part that you don't think is as important at work. You're like, oh, I really like my job, but there is, there, everyone needs that community aspect. And so, yeah, it's been really great to see the community be so engaging. And we have people in Chicago and Boston and Florida and Texas. So, yeah. Awesome. So you mentioned internships. So that's a really nice segue into my next question, <laughs> which is, 
What technical skills do you use as a software engineer too at Microsoft? And what advice do you have for college students applying for technical internship and apprenticeship opportunities at Microsoft? So on my day-to-day -day job, I mentioned before how I have done kind of a little bit of everything. Um, so for me, I do a lot of C-sharp because it's Microsoft. And then for kind of client-side stuff, yeah, C, C-sharp, and then client-side stuff, JavaScript, TypeScript, React, HTML, CSS, kind of everything under that hat. And then data querying languages, so Custo, SQL. But I would say if you're looking to try to apply to an internship, even a full-time position um, or an apprenticeship of some sort, focusing less on the specifics of, oh, I'm really, really good at Java or I'm really, really good at, you know, this language. Like that's awesome. And those are great skills to have. But how do they apply in the workplace was a big shift that I had to kind of make when I started my job. And even when I was kind of interviewing for like the Explorer program or when I was interviewing for my uh, internships, that was something that the interviewers emphasized a lot, that at least what they were looking for was less so for you to know right off the bat that, hey, you know how to get the answer right. You know, it was more so can they problem solve? Like they wanted you to see that you were stuck and that you were able to then break it down. Okay, how do I solve this? What language or what that's done in is going to change all the time. Computer science changes so much. So even within like my couple last years here, it's like I've had to relearn total new tech stacks or like change totally the, my coding environment that I'm in. And that is kind of always guaranteed that it's going to be changing. But the actual skills of how do you problem solve? How resourceful are you? I remember for me in college, there were times when it's like when I didn't understand things or even throughout my internship, when I was learning new complicated data structures or like data systems, I would go to YouTube and I would go to the internet and like EDX, Coursera have a lot of really great courses that you can look videos up super quickly. I loved Harvard CS50. I didn't go to Harvard, but I could take their course for free and it helped me so much. Microsoft has a lot of resources too. Azure has a kind of a 30 day cloud skills challenge that doing things like that and finding those resources um, are going to help you a lot when it comes to being successful in internships and wanting to kind of transfer into that full time job. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing all those resources. I know a lot of people will find those helpful. So fantastic. Thank you so much. For our next question, uh, what advice do you have about work-life balance and avoiding burnout for those who are early in their careers? That's a big topic. Yes. I think especially with COVID, burnout is people with people that just came out of university and were starting their job for the first time was extremely prevalent, at least with like the peers that I talked with. And I think for me, even when I started, I started full-time before COVID. Um, but even then, the biggest shift that I saw was that in university, I was very used to you grind, you stay up till four in the morning with like three Starbucks, like finishing your paper, finishing, turning in your assignment, like last minute, 1159 is a deadline. And that's just not sustainable long-term as a full-time job, I realized very quickly. Um, and so I see a lot of people will want to, you know, impress their manager, impress your team. And they'll say, yeah, I can do this, 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 but you can do all of that, but you have to stay up till midnight or like two in the morning. And then from there, that's the norm because your manager is going to think, okay, they can do somehow all of this stuff. I'll continue to give them more. And so being comfortable with setting those boundaries, I found was something that I still kind of have to learn and not feeling bad with saying, you know, Hey, okay, I can take on that task, but then asking my manager, can you help me reprioritize, you know, some of my other tasks? Like I already have this on my plate. How do I move forward with it? And so for me, I kind of think of buckets, I guess you could say of like, my work is one bucket that makes up Sabrina and I really like it. And it, you know, works my brain. It makes me, you know, feel useful and intelligent, but that's not all that there is to making me happy. I really, really like working out and I did synchronize swimming for eight years. So I've always had that be a core part of my life. And so Seattle doesn't have a ton of pools. So I've now become very addicted to soul cycle. And that is kind of my at least two, three times a week. I love doing soul cycle and I put it at the same level of I have to get my projects done. I have to go to soul cycle because that is me. And I also really love hanging out with my friends and traveling. And so it's kind of again, same level of priority. 
I would definitely recommend anyone that moves to a new city, look at the local rec uh, centers. A lot of them will have kind of free or really cheap art classes that you can do. We took a pottering, you know, we learned how to do little paint and sips. And I would say also putting in time for travel now that the world's opening up a little bit. I was able to go to Spain at the end of last year. And that was the first time that I had taken a like long vacation. And so putting in kind of PTO requests for like, oh, I'm going to be gone for two weeks. I was like very scared, but I think it's a good exercise of kind of saying, hey, I'm going to take time off. That's a normal thing that people do. And it makes me happy. And I was able to go to Spain with my family and my boyfriend and, you know, explore all of this. And I came back and work was fine. Nothing was on fire. Nothing exploded because there's always going to be more work. That's kind of how I think like there will always be things to stress about. There will always be more work. That is going to be the norm always. So how do you kind of make it sustainable? Yeah, that is spectacular advice, Sabrina. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, so many great tips. I'll have to go and rewatch <laughs> just that se- section <laughs> later. Um, fantastic. So um, next question, what is a pro tip you would like to share with our audience? Pro tip, honestly, would be leveraging your connections. And those aren't always, at least in my experience, they haven't always been, you know, the quote unquote professional connections that you make. When I was in college, a lot of the connections that I had were my friends and that they were also studying computer science. And one of them got an internship at Microsoft. And so the next summer, that one person gave us all recommendations and then we all got internships and then, you know, kind of so on and so forth. And I think especially when you're able to do things like internships and meet so many different people. Even if you go to a conference for a weekend, like if you get the chance to go to Grace Hopper, that's an amazing opportunity to find people that will kind of be in your corner, support you, even if they met you for a single day and you never see them again for the next three years, they still may remember you and say, Hey, I saw this opportunity or like, I'm going to be in your city or I'm working at your company now. Let's talk. And you never know where those are going to lead up. I would say a lot of like the success that I have had or me being able to even get into Microsoft or get into computer science has all been because people have pulled me aside and say, hey, Sabrina, no, you're coming and you're going to go talk to this Microsoft recruiter. And I was like, I'm a freshman. I don't know anything. And they're like, no, you're going. And I was like, okay. And so then I went and I was able to do all this stuff, you know? And so it's having those relationships with people genuine relationships, not ones that are, you know, just looking for what can you give me back? Because you never know kind of when and in what capacity they're going to be able to help you out. And you're going to be able to kind of be a sponsor for someone else. Absolutely. I totally agree with you, like uh, fostering uh, connections and relationships. It's all about uh, having a genuine connection with that person and give and take and not just, not just taking. So (laughs) thank you so much. So, um, Is there anything else you want to tell us? I think just as being a woman and as well, especially being a Hispanic woman, kind of person of color, I think there are a lot of times that I remember in my own journey, walking into spaces or even when I would tell people that I was, you know, a software engineer at Microsoft, they'd be like, oh, okay. Like, well, what do you work on? Kind of almost trying to see and undersee, okay, does she actually know what she's talking about? Did she actually earn her spot? You know? Is she just a diversity hire? And I think for me, it's kind of a constant thing. You know, you're always going to be shown that. But what has helped me is knowing that I have a really strong community of uh, other women and other Hispanic women that are in tech. That again, I was able to foster those through internships, through meeting people, even through, you know, Instagram or YouTube, like reaching out to people. It can make the world of a difference. And for me, I think it's important to... I would just kind of give the piece of advice that make sure that you have a community that you can always come back to because it's kind of like, here's a community you feel super strong, confident, they build you up, and then you have to kind of go out by yourself into the world. And when you're faced with those situations, you're able to have kind of strength to pull from to say, okay, right now I'm a little bit alone or I'm a little bit scared or intimidated, but I know that my friends think I'm all like super great and smart and they've done it and they're doing it so I can do it too. Because kind of doing it alone is really hard. It's a lot. And so I think being able to have that community and also being that community for other people, you know, now I'm kind of more three years, two years into my role. So I feel a lot more comfortable, but when new people join the team or especially like young Latinas, I see are joining Somos, 
I understand how they're feeling. I know it's overwhelming. I know it can be scary. So I kind of try and do my best to help be that support system for them. And yeah, just being able to keep learning and keep being able to never stop trying to look for those resources. Um, I think we have a slide that we're going to share out after this that has kind of a list of all of those things that I would encourage to kind of take a look at and find, share any other ones that you all have. Because I think that's, yeah, that's the constant thing of that, especially computer science, you have to keep learning always. That is very true. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Sabrina, um, thank you so much for, for joining us today. And um, you shared so many amazing insights and you're doing amazing work at Microsoft with Somos and uh, everything that you're doing as a software engineer. And it's really uh, phenomenal. And I've, I've really enjoyed um, having this conversation with you today. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for having me so much. It was great to talk with you. Thank you.